think continuously evolving your career is incredibly important. If, if you look back at maybe an old style career model, which might be become a deep expert in an area, do that for 20 years and just become more and more of an expert. I really don't think anyone's career is going to progress that way. And certainly if I look now at what I do today versus what I did 10 years ago, what I did 20 years ago, it's dramatically different at every stage. So I think you have to get used to the idea about continuously evolving your career. You will have to reinvent yourself as you move through your career. I think it's also really important to have that future view, constantly be looking what are the developments in the world of tax, what are the areas that are going to be big areas going forwards, and what are areas that will be less important, and then make sure you're evolving with that over time to make sure you continue to be as marketable as you can be. So I'm going to take it as a given that we all know we need to be technically good at tax. That is a baseline for our job. But I think there are a number of softer skills areas that are really important, particularly as you become more senior in your role. I think the first point is being really commercial. It's really important that you can understand the business, speak the language of the business, and talk to them in a way that they will understand, and also show compromise. If you're the tax person who's always saying no, you're quickly going to lose the buy-in of the business. So you have to work with the business to develop compromises with them. I think the second area that's really important is around process and technology. We know that these are becoming increasingly important for tax people. With the approaches that tax authorities are taking, we all have to be good at delivering processes and controls and systems and being able to explain those to tax authorities and people within our wider business. I think the other thing that's really important as you become more senior in your role is leadership skills. If you look, the average person takes on a leadership role at the age of 30, but the first time anyone tends to have leadership training on average is 42. So there's a big gap there. So my advice to anyone, if you don't have line management responsibility at the moment, try and get it as early in your career as you can. And then really think about what's the support in developing those skills. So find a really good mentor to help you develop those skills. And then make sure you're getting the right formal training. And with areas like leadership training, there's good training and there's bad training. So make sure you're getting very good training in that area. The final skill set that I think is really important is around selling. And I think this can sometimes feel like a dirty word for tax people. Certainly, if I think back earlier in my career, I was working at one of the big accounting firms. My career was going quite well. But ultimately, I left because I didn't want to be a partner, because I didn't want to be a salesperson all the time. If I look back now, I realize I was probably a little bit naive. In practice, you're actually selling all the time, particularly as you move into more senior roles. I'm constantly selling a vision to my team. This is, you know, if we all work hard and we're looking at the improvements we're looking at, this is what we can deliver through that. I'm selling to my boss. If I'm going into my boss and saying, I would like some more headcount, I need some more resource, I have to tell him what the benefit is that we can get out of that. And also I'm selling to the wider business. If you listen to what I'm saying here, this is the benefit we will win as a wider business. So I know selling can be quite difficult. And for tax people, some people definitely have that skills. For some of us, it perhaps becomes a little bit more difficult. But I think as early in your career as you can, think about how you're developing that kind of skill set. So I think when you're looking at transitioning out of a role in practice into a role in industry, you're going to be bringing a great skill set with you. You're going to be technically strong. You're probably going to have some really good leadership experience. You have a lot of experience of project management. So you have a great base skill set, but it's around some of the nuances and adapting to the different world. So if you think about it when you're in practice, at the end of the day, you are an advisor. And no matter how well connected with your client you are, no matter how well you partner with your client, at the end of the day, as long as you've given your advice, you've maybe put it in writing, if the client ignores your advice, or if the client implements it badly, ultimately it's their problem. Once you're in industry though, you don't have that protection. At the end of the day, if the business as a whole ignores your advice, you still have to implement it. You still have to find a way of going back and persuading people that it's the right idea. So those kind of influencing skills are incredibly important, and in a nice way, not taking no for an answer. I think the other thing is around prioritization. If you're working in an accounting firm and a client has come to you to ask you for some advice, they've already treating that as a high priority. And you can see that because they're prepared to pay someone maybe 800 or 1,000 pounds an hour for that advice. When you move into industry, you will realize that the to-do list is a lot longer. So how do you go about really prioritizing that to-do list, triaging it and working out what are the items you're really going to focus on, and then perhaps getting comfortable that some of the other items you'll have to come back to in later years, and then getting the support of the wider management to that strategy. <laughs>